over 100 years has passed since these hardy pioneers first arrived on America's shores. And today the world returns to Minnesota's Iron Range, this time for World Cup cross-country skiing. ESPN presents FIS World Cup cross-country skiing. Today, the men's 30-kilometer race from the Giants Ridge Ski Center in Bowabic, Minnesota. The story this morning so far is the cold temperatures and how they may affect the men's 30-kilometer race here as this first-ever World Cup comes to the state of Minnesota. Hello again, everyone. I'm Peter Graves, and the World Cup is here with some 14 nations from around the globe. Well, the story so far is the cold temperatures. The Arctic Express has come down from Canada, and the temperature is about 5 degrees below zero. A man who knows how the cold may affect the athletes is the Nordic director of the U.S. ski team and a former Olympic competitor himself. Jim Page working with us as ESPN's expert commentator and Jim it is a cold one this morning how will it affect the athletes Peter it's a cold day but it's it's okay the sun is out uh, the weather looks good other than the cold and the FIS officials who are here are going to control these temperatures so it's going to be just fine all right, Jim, let's talk about the American athletes now. We've got Jim Galanis here, although he is questionable, and Bill Koch is back with a fold. Right, Jim Galanis will not race today. He's been sick, and with the temperature as cold as it is, it's just not worth taking a risk. Bill Koch is back, and we're real excited about that. He's skiing well. Auden Endestat, uh, our Norwegian turned American citizen two years ago, is skiing very well, and we expect that he'll have a good finish today. All right, and how about some of the Europeans? Of course, Gundas Vaughn is here. He's absolutely fantastic. There's some other Europeans to be reckoned with. Gunda is awesome, yes, and, uh, and I wouldn't bet on anybody else today, uh, other than perhaps some of the other Swedes. The Swedish team is very strong. Could be Sweden, Sweden, Sweden at the top today. But also look for Paul Gunnar Mikkelsplatz of Norway, perhaps a Soviet, perhaps one of the Finns. All right, well, it's going to be a great race here for Minnesota, and we'll return with more World Cup action. It's World Cup cross-country skiing here at Giants Ridge. It is a cold day, as we said, about minus 5 degrees below zero. There are 140 racers that will be taking part in today's competition. They're going at 30-second intervals. And one of the top skiers to look for in the competition is starting in the 73rd position, Gundis Vaughn of Sweden, who had a great Olympic Games, winning a gold medal in Sarajevo in the 15-kilometer event and a silver in the 50-kilometer. He's a good one, and he's getting the countdown now. Gundus Vaughn has got to be one of the men to beat in the competition, only 23 years old. He's a good one. Out in the course now, Kari Ristinen, he started in 51st position. Before the race, I asked U.S. team member Bruce Kamner what effect today's cold temperatures might have on the race. Well, <clears throat> um, I'll have to dress a lot warmer, but it, mostly I'm concerned about um, just breathing cold air, cold hands, cold feet. And it's a lot of times cold. Your eyes can kind of freeze up, so it's real hard to see on the downhills. And uh, in a 30K, it can kind of affect you a lot more because you sweat a lot more over a duration of time since you're out there so much longer. And uh, that makes it a lot harder, too. I think it, they're just the wear on you is, is more. It just makes it m that much more fatiguing. In the starting gate now is young Jan Ottesen of Sweden, number 86. He's ready to go on this frosty morning, and... And he is all set. Jan Ottesen, number 86. And he bursts out of the starting gate now. Now using the skate technique that you will see ever so much on the World Cup circuit. In Seefeld last year in Austria at the World Championships, it became the only technique virtually used out in the course. And the Swedes have perfected it. Here is Kevin Brockman at the two-kilometer point. He is a member of the U.S. ski team from Stillwater, Minnesota, skiing with a home course advantage here. We'll watch him throughout the day. Kevin Brockman around the corner, continuing to carry the speed now. Here is number 60. This is Pavel Bentz of Czechoslovakia, a newcomer to the Czech program. They're getting very, very strong. They have been with their ski jumpers for a number of years, and they're beginning to come on with their cross-country skiers, particularly with the women's program. Pavel Bentz of Czechoslovakia going out through the woods right now. Also at the two-kilometer mark now is young Claude Perrat, the younger brother of Francis Jean-Paul Perrat. He's a border guard in France, and he's skiing out on the course now. One of the very difficult and tricky sections out in this course at the eight-kilometer mark now. We're midway through the first lap of this race. Tony Morgren of Sweden negotiates the corner very, very well. And right behind him is a fall. That is Ron Howden of Canada, but he gets his composure and quickly is back in the track. 
Several more skiers making their way down this hill now on this course designed by Al Merrill, former Dartmouth College ski coach. Skiers actually getting out of the track right now, being very cautious as they make their way around the corner, but they're still taking the corner tight and carrying a great deal of their speed. Now here is Gundus Vaughn, who at this point in the race is our leader. Gundus Vaughn is already established at this point with the fastest time so far. And Gundus Vaughn working well around the corner, an Italian athlete hot on the heels of Gundus Vaughn. American Bill Koch now showing why he is such a great skier. He was a former downhill ski racer. He switched over to cross country when he was a young skier at the Putney School in Vermont, and he is making good turns around the corner. Here is Audun Endestad, originally a Norwegian native. Audun became an American citizen on the eve of the 1984 Olympic Games in Sarajevo, making his way up the hill right now, skating and herringboning, a very steep hill section of the course. Audun Endestad for the United States, skiing a very good race thus far. Here's an interesting spot that is developed right now. Here, a slower skier from Canada pulls over and allows a faster skier, number 85, Alan Maison, to make way on the course, really helping his teammate. And as so often you see, cross country is a race within a race. Here, John Underwood of the Green of Dartmouth College pulls over to allow Dan Simino from the United States ski team to skate up the hill. You know, you'll watch the skating. It requires a lot more room on the track than traditional cross country skiing used to. Skating up this hill right now, very important to keep your momentum going all the time. Dan Simino turned around to see who was still behind him. He continues to skate well. The young skier who is originally from Livermore Falls, Maine, has been a veteran of the U.S. ski team for some seven years on the national team program. Here is number 34, Ari Heinonen of Finland, continuing to skate up that hill. And you see the ski never stops gliding. It keeps moving all the way through the glide phase into the stadium now for some much-needed fluid replenishment. You are perspiring heavily out there in this 30-kilometer course. This is number 85, Alan Maison from Canada, who grabs a drink and continues without ever breaking his stride. He keeps the momentum going. Alan Maison goes out on the course right now. Well, the leaders at the midway point of the race are Gundus Vaughn of Sweden with a time of 24.32, followed by Norwegian Ovi Aunli with a time of 24.45. Kari Ristinen, the American, to ever win a medal in Olympic cross-country skiing, is setting a good pace for himself right now at the 13-kilometer mark. Now, these are three laps of the competition. They're skiing on a 10-kilometer course. Bill Koch is on the second lap right now. Here is the former world junior champion, number 79, Vladimir Smirnov of the Soviet Union. And right behind him is Dominic Locatelli of France, a newcomer to the French program that is very strong. Gundus Vaughn in the second lap right now continues to pour in the steam. He is looking very, very good. And he is followed by an American skier. This is Todd Boonster, who's wearing number 70 for the U.S. team. Skating is clearly the fastest way to ski cross country, yet it continues to be a controversial topic. But with today's cold temperatures, will it be faster? Um, it will be faster to skate. Uh, this is a good course to skate. Um, you know, I, I certainly do believe that uh, we should have freedom of choice and technique, and, uh, and that's been the battle that I've been in all along. And not that I'm so much pro skating, but I'm for free technique. At the 19-kilometer mark now, Dominic Locatelli of the French team is running in 17th position, number 78. One of the strong skiers from France are beginning to develop right now. Here is number 68, a newcomer to the Swiss team, Joachim Guidon, and he's skiing very well. Number 62, teammate Andy Grunenfeller, also from Switzerland. And an Italian skier, Gianfranco Polvera, continue to battle it out in the course on this downhill section. Now American Audun Endestad, number 83, is skiing very well. At this point, Audun is running in the top 15 in the competition. It's a very, very good sign for the United States. Here comes Alan Maison of Canada, followed by Dan Simino, and they've continued to ski together through much of this race. They are just packed together very tightly. Here comes number 67, Ovi Aunli of Norway. He is a good, good skier. Watch the skating techniques. Right behind him are two great skiers. We'll call them the Swedish Express. Eric Oslin and Tony Morgren going through the picturesque woods of northern Minnesota skating now. Looking very, very good. Gundas Vaughn getting uh, some encouragement from Bank Rosen, one of the Swedish trainers. And Gunda still looking very, very strong. Look at the emphasis on those pole plants. Peggy, he's awesome. Yes, one of the great things to see is just how relaxed Gunda is. He's obviously going very fast. He's got those big, tall poles working for him. And yet he seems to be out for a Sunday stroll. Pierre Harvey, Paul Gunnar, Mickelsplass right behind. 
matching each other almost 